Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the OpenVPN server that just became available in Unify Network Application 7.4.156. This is still a release candidate, just so you know. So we're going to set up the OpenVPN server, but we're also going to set up Dynamic DNS because if you have a dynamic IP and it changes, your VPN will go down and that's what I have. My ISP gear is in bridge mode. We're also going to create a couple traffic management rules to restrict our VPN users from getting to anywhere in our network except our Synology NAS. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at MacTelecomNetworks.com. I do have affiliate links down in the description below. And we also have a new merch store. So if you want to check that out, that's MacTelecomStore.com or you could find that below as well. The first thing that we're going to get set up is the dynamic DNS. So you're going to have to go to the settings wheel and then click on internet and then and click on either WAN 1 or WAN 2, whichever you'll be using for the OpenVPN server. Under Dynamic DNS, we could create new Dynamic DNS. There's a bunch of different services that we could use. Afraid, DNS Park, DSL Reports. I'm just going to be using NoIP for this video. Now I'm over at NoIP.com, we need to register so we could create a new account. With this new account, we need to put an email, a password, and then a host name. So the host name could be whatever you want, but you just need to remember what it is. I've already set a host name up as well as the username and password. So let's get into that account. Now we're into my account. A couple things that you're going to need. You'll need a password. You'll need a username and you could choose whatever username you want as long as it's available. And this is all done under account and then account info. It will alert you if you need to get these things done. So once you have your username, your password, and your host name created, we could go back into Unify. Now back under Unify, we need to put our host name, our username, and our password. You can specify a server if you want, but you don't need to. So I'm going to get that in, and then I'm going to press create. Now looking under dynamic DNS, we can see the service. We have no IP, and then we have our host name associated with that. So now that that's done, we could do our OpenVPN server. Now to create the OpenVPN server, we need to go to teleport and VPN, and then and we have VPN servers, we're going to create new. With Ubiquity, we now have a few different options for VPN servers. We have WireGuard, OpenVPN, and then L2TP. We're going to be focusing on the OpenVPN. The top, we're going to specify a name. I'll just say VPN. And then it's saying server address. So which WAN IP do you want to go through? So I'm going to be using my WAN 1. If you have a WAN 2, you could use that as well. The default OpenVPN port is 1194. And then under user authentication, we need to create a new user. So for each one of your workers, you want to create one of these. So I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to put in my name, Cody, and then I'll put in a password and then we'll create that user. After the users are created, we could go down to advanced and we could switch this over to manual if we want. So we have a radius profile and then we have the gateway subnet. So we could switch this subnet. I'm just going to leave it at 192.168.3.1 for this video. Now that's everything that we need to do so we could apply the changes. Now we need to download the configuration file. So I'll click on download and then I'm going to open that up in Notepad++. We need to switch the public IP to our dynamic DNS hostname. Now with the configuration file open in Notepad++, we could see under line four, it says remote. And beside that is our public IP and then the port. So we need to change the public IP to be our dynamic DNS name and then save this file. So once I do that, I'm going to send it over to my phone and we'll see if it works. Now I'm on my phone. I have the OpenVPN client running and we could see that I'm importing a profile. So this is something at ddns.net, which is my dynamic DNS. So I'm going to press add. It's showing us our profile name, which we could change. It's showing us our server host name, which we can't change. And then we need to put our username in. So this is the username that we added into Unify. After we add the username, it's going to ask us for that password for that user. And as you can see, we are now connected to the OpenVPN server, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead, open up a ping utility and see if we could hit my Synology NAS as well as one of the Unify access points. So if this ping utility opened up on my phone, I'm going to ping 192.168.10.220, which is my Synology NAS. And we could see that the packets are going through. So that's working how it should. So one of my access point is on 192.168.10.160. And we should be able to hit this because we haven't put any traffic management rules in yet. And as you can see, those ping replies are coming back. So now we have to create some rules to be able to block that out to only allow this VPN to get to our Synology NAS. Okay, now we're back into Unify and I'm under traffic management. So we're gonna wanna create a new rule. This first rule, the action is gonna be to block and then the category is gonna be an IP address. And we're gonna put in an IP address range. So we could add IP address range. And I'm gonna start at 192.168.3.1. 
to 192.168.3.255. So that's that whole range for that VPN server. Under our target, we're gonna block out every single subnet. So we're gonna select a device and we could say all devices. Now I'm gonna call this block open VPN to networks. And then I'm gonna add the rule. So now if we go back to our phone, we shouldn't be able to get to our Synology NAS or that Unify access point. Now back on our phone, we could see that I have the IP address for our access point. Let's try to ping it. And you can see that the requests are timing out. So now let's try to ping my Synology NAS. And again, we're not able to hit it. So we need to go back into our traffic management rules, create an allow rule to allow this VPN to get to the NAS. So now we're gonna create another rule and then we're gonna have it this time the action to be allow. The category is again gonna be an IP address range of 192.168.3.1 to 192.168.3.255. And then we're gonna have it select a device. If you know the IP address of the device, you could type it in here. Mine is done under a host name. So I'm gonna add that host name. Now we're gonna have a note and I'll say allow VPN to NAS. And then we're gonna add that rule. Now that that rule is enabled, we should be able to hit the Synology NAS from our VPN clients. Now from my phone, let's try to hit the NAS at 192.168.10.220. And we can now see that those ping replies are successful, so all of our VPN clients could get to the Synology NAS. So that's going to be this video on the OpenVPN server. We went through how to set up a dynamic DNS, and we also went through some traffic management rules. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.